Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 133. Had a little crisis in the meeting numbers this morning, but everybody got me straightened out. This is 133, and this is the last day of August. Uh, happy to have you with us on a Thursday, or whatever day you happen to be watching this. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't here with us right here, right now. Let's go talk about what we're going to go talk about. Uh, the agenda. So we'll do triage first, knock out some bugs since we kind of skipped a little bit of time moving ourselves to Thursdays, every other Thursday now. Uh, we'll go plow through those. And then I'll talk a little bit about Wix 4 status. Um, as promised, Wix 4 would start in August. It's August and starting to make progress. Um, and some cool stuff happening there. Probably more cool stuff than I expected expected we'd be able to do in Wix 4, but we'll talk about that. And then as always, we'll do questions, comments at the end for anything that uh, didn't get slotted into the agenda up front. So let's go ahead and knock out the bugs. Bob, you ready? Go for it. Here we go. Nine with two open. Um, okay. This, I too hope closed. Is too closed. Yes, I'm not signed in right now. Sorry. Um, right, too closed. Uh, all right, cool. This person seems to think that it's all good. Well, no wait. So oh. I no I I opened it back up for triage uh, because he's looking for a feature request to support this. So it would be a vote of feature From request the to handle the escaping of these things, which is a very tricky thing. But yes, um, or not, as the case may be. Not tricky. Not support. Not handle. Sorry. Um. Currently, we escape. In this case, he would want it to not escape. Right. So that the MS cool. build reference... And then when you get it back it's later, it's it's already evaluated. Um, right. It's interesting. I don't know enough I'll about the what. innards. Um, tell you what. Let him... Tell him if, if he wants to work on this, we'll reopen the bug. If not, we're going to leave it closed. Okay. That works. Wix 3.11 doesn't uninstall previous versions of Embundle during upgrade, Embedded Bundle. This is the discussion. Uh, this is this is me. I still need to go back and dig into the okay. dig into the change. I, I believe we have this understood, and that it is the change in protocol. So it's just a matter of fixing the. You know, do we change the protocol version to fix or to not have this problem happen? Right. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, Wix 4 should automatically set PE. Yeah, so I went back. Um, you know, this is still something that inside MSI is all properly handled. Um, and in fact, um, reinstall mode documentation makes a big deal about it. Um, went back, poked around. PE checksum is still set. Um, you know, by the modern linker. Okay. The most modern linker. So I think this is a real thing. Cool. So it's assigned to you, so I guess we're good to go. Um, yeah, sure. Okay. This may be a fun thing to talk about when you get around to it, or to describe it when you get around to it, uh, when we get around to talking about Wix 4 changes. Uh, it may be an interesting feature to talk about a, for instance, in the new world, here's how you do these things. Um, right. Just as a, hey, we had some. And this is also probably a language change, so oh. definitely... Um, yeah, okay. whip, whippable. Yep. Um, I generally agree with this. We should document these things. Yeah. Okay. I'll take uh, it. Okay. Uh, Windows installer hangs when running us inside a container build thingy. Did they figure out what it was? Oh, three five. Yeah, that is the problem. Um, it's got nothing to do with containers. Mm -hmm. um, if you run the Wix bundle uh, with slash passive or oh. one of the various quiets, um, it never quits. And of course, there's no way to kill it, get kill it, it to quit. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should fix this. Yes. And Even since I'm the one who added the change, mm -hmm. and it took me like three releases to get it right. I'm not going to volunteer to fix this. Um, <laughs> managed BAs and I do not get along. <laughs> um, 
No, this is uh, us, Jacob, where we have a block saying, hey, you need .NET 3.5. Um, and in passive, we uh, silently tell you you need 3.5 and then wait for you to click the OK button that you can't see. No, it's not quite that stupid. <laughs> but it, it's in that it, intelligently, it intelligently does not throw up a message box um, if, you're, if you're passive or silent, but um, it without that message box and the subsequent ability to exit, yeah, we just sit there. Yeah, so that's bad. Um, okay, we need to fix this 314. Uh, anyone want to take a shot at this? Can we volunteer Jacob or something? Should be you can give it to me. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to give you, I'm going to try to give you something else. So I was thinking of giving it to Jacob first. Um, you just don't know what's coming. Actually, I think you do know what's coming. All right, cool. Jacob said he'll take a shot at it. That's not ominous. Not. <laughs> um, documentation's out of date about including the Visual C++ Reader Show. Yeah, we still have the stuff about the merge modules, and we probably shouldn't. Um, yeah, so great. Um, now documentation the, should be rewritten. I, well, or so we could rewrite it. Um, the problem is, um, as far as I can tell from a quick search, the topic on using the VC merge modules is the only one that talks about merge modules. And of course, there's the issue that what other merge modules are appropriate um, for you know a general topic like what's there. Um, mostly, I mean, mostly there are none. Who uses merge modules anymore? I mean, VC was kind of the last holdout for most people using merge modules in, you know, somewhat modern, uh, modern apps. Uh -huh. Yeah, use Wix says instead. Uh, well, it's true, it's except for sorry, when, you, when you get a merge module, how do you use it? Right. That's my point. Right now, we have no other documentation on using merge modules, and I, I, I look at this topic and I go, what can I replace this with? And the only thing I could replace it with is, you know, you know, a, a fake merge module. You know, replace replace every instance of VC with Visual Bob no, could, or something. No, we could say we could say VC 2013, and then call out the change in VC 2015, and that probably has more value, especially 17. If over, sorry, 27, whatever the deprecation was. Um, it could turn into a nice transition of instead of merge modules, most people are doing bundles. I mean, essentially, what's happening uh, in the, a class of things. For redistributables, people stop using merge modules. Therefore, you need to move to bundles because you can't install an install inside your install. <laughs> you can't install another MSI inside your MSI. It's probably, I mean, that or would be the ideal. An MSU. Um, yeah, okay, that's reasonable. So it's another doc page, and then come back to this one, call out 2013, and try to put them together. It's like a two-parter, right? Here's the world of merge mar Here's the world of merge modules. Here's the world with bundles transition. Or oh. maybe it's just a maybe it's just a paragraph about hey, by the way, most yeah, people using merge modules use bundles instead. Go find that documentation. See, the problem we have with with this with VC runtime and bundles is that um, because we don't <laughs> because it, that five-year-old feature request I opened for burn package or bundle package mm -hmm. doesn't exist. So actually coming around to the right to tech conditions is kind of a pain. Right. So we should do that one, huh? Um, yeah. All right. Anyway, I think we know what the answer is where, when, what? No, I say we just put it in four as far as documentation because you know whatever three documentations can be done. Um, well, we also have a web milestone. Oh right. Yeah, except this is in the documentation in the chum file. Um, if we still have one of those. Well, yeah, that's a different question. Um, Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I I, just, I agree it's a two-part thing, and I, the second part is actually a pain. 
um, adding adding a note to this for you know versions is fine, easy. Yeah, let's put it in 4x and put it there until someone wants to take it. Okay. Service install description not being sent. Don't set a race description. Wow. Yeah, I can't help you. Uh, next. Make us when custom actions reference system dot net. Uh, yeah, scroll down. It's oh, dupe of four six eight eight. Red herring. Cool. Cool. Dupe. Advertise shortcuts not displaying correct icon in the start menu. Are they using advertise shortcuts correctly? Yeah, did they set a resource and all that kind of good stuff? Yeah, so this is a support question. How to use it. Yeah, you have to do advertise shortcuts differently. Why don't... Anyway. Fill out the sections and delete the others. Anyway. Delete. Anyway. Okay, so... Yeah, you need to go create a resource DLL and all that extra stuff for the... Yeah, and I added a I added a comment, Good. so they can it didn't close so it. That's a support question and send that away. All right, Wix generate compile with object path fails and a FIPS compliant. Wow, this actually needs FIPS compliant. What does it? Oh, probably an MD5 hash in it. Yep. Uh, okay, and we'll toss it in four. Uh, do we want to do this in three fourteen? I feel no strong urge for that. Okay, toss it in four. Uh, you can give it to me because I'm actually in this, believe it or not. <laughs> That's why I actually I know what this is. Huh? I don't. No, it's MS Build Tasks. Yeah, it's MS Build Tasks, but I actually, oh, I can fix this one. <laughs> that makes me, that's funny. Anyway, uh, for those that are wondering, real quick, because I have this is, is that um, when you have source code in subfolders, we generate a name for your file. Um, by hashing the path to it so that when you have you can have a foo.wxs in the root of your project and a foo.wxs in the uh, subfolder and when they both compile it used to be before this thing was introduced they would both compile into the obj folder and overwrite each other or in other words you only get one of them so the fix was to create a different name for your file anyway so it's all good so that's what this does and it uses md5 because that's what we were using way back when um, heating and active X control. Okay, so they do this. It gives them a bunch of stuff. Register a type clip. Well, that's what their thing does. They can go look at their code. Well, we don't want the DLL. So, I mean, yeah, they should go. Well, if it's it. their code, I agree. Well, Heat's not making up a type clip. That would be amazing. Yeah, and it has their name in it. No, they they have something that's writing this whenever it runs in this way. So, I mean, certainly could be a heat bug, you know, not harvesting this stuff, but that would be just a heat bug. Um, so I, I, we can toss it in 4X and someone can go investigate heat and this ActiveX control. Right? Everybody's quiet. The, those are two words I, I care very little about. Right. So Heat yeah. and ActiveX. <laughs> no, there's that. All right, cool. Uh, 4X. All right, we're done. I think. Yes? Think so? All righty then. So what are we doing in Wix 4? Progress is underway. If you watch our overall repository, you've started seeing changes happen as I've started um, doing work, pushing things around. Um, in the not too distant future, week, two weeks, three weeks, um, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people to jump in and help um, replicate patterns, I think is probably what it's going to be. Um, 
and things like that. I'll have more details for them, but if you guys are ever wondering, hey, if there's something I could get deeper in the Wix tool set in particular areas, uh, we're going to have lots of them soon, and they're going to be hopefully uh, straightforward. There'll be uh, a pattern that you can follow and then apply to new code, and it's a great way to learn uh, low-level stuff um, if you ever want to get deeper into uh, the Wix tool set, which I'm hoping there's a, a number of you here that'll do that. So lots of stuff coming up. Anyway, so what's going on right now? What's the big things going on in Wix 4 um, beyond some of the uh, language simplifications we did um, or late last year, I guess it was, oh, so long ago, um, before getting sucked back into Wix 3 and all the security and Visual Studio 2017 stuff. Um, the there are a few things that we're doing now um, and being pushed to get the uh, basically to get Wix 4 modern. Um, one of the big things up front that you can see is a, the repository organization. I've talked about this before. There's a whip that talks about it as well. Um, just as a quick reminder, the goal is to take uh, the monolithic Wix repositories that have lots of different pieces that move at various uh, different speeds. Um, and today have to be released as a single unit to break them up so that they can move at rates that are more uh, representative of what you know they need to do. Um, so it, it takes, I, I went and did a scan and we have, um, depending on how you want to count, if you include just you know file counts or file sizes, we have about a third of a million lines of code. Wix is a very big project. I don't think a lot of people realize how big it is, um, especially given the small team that maintains it all right now. Um, but you know, if you if you take out all white space everywhere, I think you get down to like 250,000 lines of code, um, and a lot of that is you know fairly stable stuff that we don't touch touch a lot, like a lot of extension stuff. Um, oh, and that was before Votive was removed. So if you put Votive back in, then it goes back up to. Yeah, about 300,000 lines of code. I forgot that we already broke out Votive. So um, what this will allow us to do is have much more targeted repositories. You can see this happening already. I've created a few repositories for things like data and extensibility, um, and I'm underway in core, which is the core tool set, the big one, um, that ties all these things together. Um, and my experience is working out pretty much the way that I hoped it would. Uh, if you need to be enlisted in all projects, you can be. If you want to work on a particular problem, you generally get to work in one repository, and it builds much faster. There's much less code. It's actually really, really nice. Um, and I don't know how many people will have cross-cutting concerns very often, um, other than like the core people here. And if you do, we're making it easy to do those cross-cut uh, concerns. Um, and it just, it's um, <laughs> its actually working out really well. It's kind of like, yeah, here's this plan that I've been thinking about for a long time, and you finally see it come together, and you finally get to use it. The big moment of truth, is this good or is this bad? And then it just starts, all the benefits you always kind of wanted out of it are start happening. It's like, ah, uh, very encouraging. So uh, that's a structure thing um, to in the report repository reorganization. That's one thing that's going on. Um, the next thing is, um, as some of you on the Wix devs mailing list will remember uh, we had some interesting discussions about um, from some guys that were doing work on Linux uh, like the putty guy and stuff like that um, and they had a lot of things a lot more working on uh, Linux than I thought Wix would work on Linux which is very very exciting um, and we had already been looking at um, moving to Wix 4.5 or 4.6 and then when .NET Core 2 came out it was like well if we move to .NET Core 2, then we should be able to move to Linux or help these guys run on Linux without any real code changes, without necessarily being dependent on Mono, uh, which may or may not be a good thing. But if we could just be on the cross-platform platform, let's see if that works. And .NET Core has .NET Core 2.0 has a lot of well, it's a lot of investment from Microsoft in it. So let's see if we can move there. Um, and it's been actually really nice. Uh, so. We're standardizing on .NET Core 2.0 for all the build tools, which is very, very cool. Um, and that does mean that the dependency for MS Build and you know, for the things that cannot move to uh, .NET Core 2.0 um, that are part of the build lab move to .NET, or .NET Framework 4.6.1. We had talked about doing 4.5 or 4.5.2. 
to or whatever before. So it'll be 461 will be the minimum .NET framework we need for the build tools. For things that ship in your code, uh, like DTF, because you use custom actions, or uh, the Bootstrapper core uh, for managed custom actions, those will continue to target the .NET framework 2.0, which I know sounds ancient and horribly old, and it is, but the code still works there, and since we're not doing a lot of investment in that, there's no reason to break that and force people to move to any particular .NET framework, because that code will run on any .NET framework. Um, so that's that's standing pat. Um, so the .NET Core 2.0 change is um, pretty cool. Uh, that's working out similarly very well. Um, now, uh, I'm curious, so how many of the tools will actually be .NET Core rather than running on the framework? Um, if you go through MS Build, our MS Build task must target .NET Framework because that's what MS Build loads. But if you go through .NET um, Build, which we may or may not support, but I think it'll just work, then you'll end up staying on .NET Core everywhere. So it kind of turns into which point do you enter. Um, if you enter through MS Build, you're going to be on the .NET Framework, and all of our .NET Core stuff will run on .NET Framework, which is you know, .NET Framework 461. If you start on .NET Core, like with uh, .NET Core of the XE, or if you run um, any of our executables by hand, those should all stay on .NET Core. Like they will not flip over to um, .NET Framework, which is the things that they will use on Linux, right? They'll just use the command line um, executables on Linux because it'll be .NET Core everywhere. Did I answer your question? Um, no. Uh, if you create, if if you build, so if you build with .NET Core, then you get the you know, I'm imagining the self-contained app. Oh, you're you're saying our tools. So, what's your vision? Yep. For you know the official build of of everything. All of our um, XCs will target .NET Core. So they'll be running on .NET Core, and uh, so they will contain all of the .NET Core assemblies. They yes. will not require the framework. Yeah. So I'm that. That's an open question, only because um, um, because we can carry every. It is possible to carry everything you need inside the .NET everything of the .NET Core that you need, you can just carry it with yeah. you. Um, or you can depend on the .NET uh, Core um, install. And because we could install the .NET Core install, um, and it's there on most of the platforms we're going to support, it's a discussion point for us to have at some point, whether we make our app self-contained and ship the .NET Core with us, or whether we depend on you having .NET Core installed. And that's really... Okay, I, think you, I think you skipped over the answer. You're saying in the official build we're going to build .NET Core assemblies. Correct, but that does not mean that we have to have the .NET Core itself self-contained with them. Well, no, but that's that's tangential. It, we're, we're targeting .NET Core, not .NET 4.6.1. Correct. Let, let me back up. The only, at this point in time, I believe the only thing that will target .NET 4.6.1 is the MS build tasks because they get loaded by MS Build, and they must target um, uh, .NET 4.6.1. If I could get that to target .NET Standard, and it could be I haven't found the magical incantation, but so far my experience shows that MS Build wants a 4.6.1 assembly there, and all the repositories, including the .NET Core <laughs> repository, creates a 4.6.1 MS Build target for MS Build. That'll be that one assembly that is .NET 461. Everything else that comes out of the core will be uh, .NET Core app or .NET Standard, right? Okay. So therefore, we either have to make it self-contained or we have to install the .NET Core runtime. Correct. And okay. that decision is uh, is a experience to learn from. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. it's mostly because it's still changing. Um, and also, I don't know if you've seen, but the .NET Core has a preview of their linker now. Yeah. Um, and it's possible 
that they may go to the point where the linker creates self um, single exes, um, and then there's a whole so that could be interesting. Um, and then there's also the question of what do we do for sensibility. Uh, so what of what of our um, my my thinking currently is that all extensions need to move to .NET Standard 2.0 as well, which is not a big deal. But um, in doing so, they may have dependencies, and I don't know what happens if you don't have a full .NET Core if one of those have a dependencies that you didn't have sure. to depend on, and so on yeah. and so forth. So there's just some things to learn here. The I think on one extreme, the one that we know will work is we can depend on installing the .NET Core uh, bundle as part of our bundle, and then um, or depend on it, whichever we uh, like. We install a .NET Framework, right? Install a .NET yeah. Core, and everything else will be dependent on it, um, and everything will just work because it'll be the whole .NET Core. Or we could be completely self-contained, um, all the way to the point at which we get single X's. And somewhere in between that spectrum, we will find the correct place for us to get. Um, and one of the things is we will learn a lot about deploying .NET Core and things like that, which is honestly one of the uh, tertiary. It's not even secondary, but tertiary benefits of doing this is that, I mean, when I do things, I need to learn new stuff about them. Um, you know, and this has been very educational in how .NET Core uh, works. And if a lot of this sounds like gobbledygook of .NET Core, .NET Standard, and .NET Framework, uh, you Join are not alone. <laughs> yeah, you are, you are definitely not alone. Um, and if you want to learn how it really works, jump into this tool set and you're going to see it. And you'll learn a lot because we're going to span and jump through that whole space, which is kind of true of any you know, source code base. I mean, at 250,000 lines of code, you know, 300,000 lines of code, you are probably big enough to have most problems. Um, and so if you, know, you want to learn .NET Core 2.0 kind of things, we'll have those here. So lots of cool stuff around the .NET Core, and uh, you know the secondary objective, or one is to learn, but the other thing is that we're going to get running on Linux, and .NET Core has a lot of investment in it, so we're getting advantages of a lot of new ideas and things like that that we're also taking advantage of. As we move into the third point, which is the compiler modernization, um, the Wix toolset was designed in 1999, 98 roughly somewhere in that time frame, depending on when you want to say it, the design really started. Um, and it was modeled after um, C, C++. And uh, we've moved on from the 1999 view of C and compiling and building C++ to lots more ideas about what you can do today. Um, if you haven't heard of LLVM, it's an interesting project to go kind of poke around in, assuming you have any interest in you know, compiler concepts and things like that, to see where we've gotten to with this concept of the compiler as a pipeline, as opposed to the compiler as a set of tools that get you know, managed by an overall make system, things like that. It still has all those make systems and so on and so forth, but there's a lot of interesting thinking you can do when you start thinking about the compiler as a pipeline. And a lot of this... Uh, a lot of these languages that we've seen pop up that all compile down to native, like Rust and um, uh, does D compile down? I forget. Um, I think Swift. Um, there's a lot of languages that have come around that are higher level languages that make life, you know, at the higher level language is easier to write in. But it ends up going down through a native compiler and you get a native binary at the end. So there's really cool things when you think about the world in that way. And the Wix toolset itself. Um, at the you know Wix DLL level that you we know of wasn't too far away from a lot of this, um, and with some uh, interesting changes that we'll be discussing more and more as they become a little bit more concrete as we work through them. Uh, there's a lot of cool things we can do to the Wix toolset to make it um, much more interesting as we roll into the future of things. For example, f breaking out beyond. Um, MSI. And if you've ever been around long enough or you had a private conversation with me, you know I've talked about simplified Wix and things like that in the past where we did a lot of experimentation in what should the future of the Wix toolset be as we look at moving beyond just MSI, which is what Wix is known for doing very well, but you know that's not the only thing that we want to do. Um, we want to do all packaging formats that of, you know, of interest, whatever interest is, means. Um, and We've learned a lot from simplified Wix that suddenly, with a couple different reframings of problems, realize that we're actually way closer with Wix than we thought we were. And so now is a great time, given the way Confluence events have come together, to make 
take a lot of ideas from Simplify Wix and bring them into the Wix toolset that we know and start moving the, the Wix toolset into a more modern, um, basically modernize it the way that the rest of the world is modernizing the way that we build software. So again, there's a lot of cool things coming out of this. And I know I'm being very vague right now, but that's because I'm in the middle of um, breaking things apart to try to make it clearer where stuff goes. And in both the report, repository reorganization and the compiler modernization, there's going to be um, opportunities for people to jump in and help take what I'm going to start as early patterns and then replicate them through the rest of the tools. So there will be a change in the compiler that I'll do in a couple places and say, cool, now this needs to be applied to the other, you know, thousand other elements, or well, it's not a thousand, uh, you know, 200 elements or whatever it is. So it'll be like, hey, we need to replicate this. So it could be a divide and conquer. Um, and I'm kind of hoping maybe we'll all get together on some Sunday that we all block out some distant future and we just kind of sit together on a call like this and uh, put together a you know a, a compiler modernization you know phase one phase two phase three kind of discussions and things like that. So anyway, that's a dream I have. Um, it could be that I'm the only person on the call and I'm just kind of plying my way through code. But if you know you guys get interested, um, and Jacob, this is why I tried to uh, take you out of that other bug and maybe or get you in that other bug and get Sean on the repository reorganization because I know he knows my build tools, and then have you come back and maybe try to help inside the code of the compiler organization, because I know you've expressed some interest in some of those areas. Um, and Sean, I've already tried to lope, rope into helping me do more of the repository organization. For example, uh, one of the things I'm looking at doing is breaking out the an extension, pick one of them, move it out into its own repository, so now their extensions can move at their own rate, get bug fixes at their own rate, not be tied to the Wix tool set. And I'm hoping Sean or anybody else will be able to help to then say, cool, let's take the other N, I don't know, was it 15 or whatever extensions we have, and break them out to their own repositories. So lots of cool stuff happening now all the way through the end of the year is kind of the way that I see it. And we actually have time on the schedule and work being done at Fire Giant that we're putting towards this world, so I know it's happening. Um, and we're not doing work in 3, which is another big thing. We're just not going back to Wix 3, um, lest there be a security bug that come out of nowhere. That would be probably the worst thing to hit us. Um, let's just hope that doesn't happen. Um, knock on wood, um, and we'll roll forward from there. So lots of cool stuff coming up for people that want to work, work inside the Wix tool set, and um, I'm, I'm really excited. I didn't think we'd be able to do all this. I had dreams we'd be able to do these kinds of things. I thought a lot of them were Wix 5 kind of things. But when I got into it, looked at it, and looked at the time we had a Fire Giant, um, and then looked at the schedule, I'm like, you know, we can actually do a lot of this. And the code. The Wix toolset code was actually way better, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, laid out way better for this than I um, hoped <laughs> in a lot of ways. So cool stuff coming. Um, and you can start thinking about, oh, if you want to be involved, we're going to have more things of ways of getting into the inside of the Wix tool set. All right, so that's Wix 4 status. I've talked a bunch about that because, as you can tell, I'm actually really excited about it. I'm really excited about talking about these things as they become more concrete here, even in the next couple weeks. So uh, questions, comments, things people want to ask about, talk about beyond this. Um, Bob already jumped in one on the .NET Core. Uh, while that was being discussed, it's all good. Anything else? People will have things they want to discuss. It's all quiet out there. Sean's all quiet. We're very happy to have Sean. He's in Texas and safe and sound so far, unlike many, many other people that we think about. Like, just crazy what happens in floods all around the world. There's like three or four of them going on right now. It's amazing. So, um, hope all's well there. And on that very somber note, I'm going to let people go, get back to their days, um, take it easy, fun things going on with tool set, think about what's going on in the world, and until next week, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>